Hello and welcome to Purple Whale Gaming. I am going to uh, play a game today called Virtual Pool. I'm I've loaded up on my DOSBox um, DOSBox staging is the name of the version of DOSBox that I'm playing. Uh, that has some useful features that are um, worthwhile having this version. It lets you do so much more. There's a few more customizations and things you can do with it. So I'm going to play Virtual Pool. I'll start it running. Now as you can see, it says it's a pre-release version. The reason that I've got a pre-release version is because it was floating around on the internet uh, back in the day and um, it didn't require you to own the full game, but that does come with some unfortunate side effects. I'm going to try and get it to run in 64480 Visa BIOS extension mode, which, there we go, that's now come up. Now the problem with this, there are a few issues with it. There aren't any backgrounds on the behind the table, as you can see. Uh, the AI is non-existent. So basically you can only really play with yourself. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, if I select a game type, game setup, Let's have straight pull. Uh, I'll leave it on three games. Now that doesn't mean three games, so it's like a best of three. That means it's the first person to three. And I'm also going to change this to say 15 points. And the reason is after 15 points, um, you get a new, a, good, a new frame, as we would maybe call it in the UK, uh, whereas this calls them games. So there we go. I'll take a shot see balls moving around the screen. Uh, I don't seem to be able to go full screen on here and still record it for some reason, I don't know why. Um, it's a very old interface, it, lets you, it makes you use the mouse and keyboard. So if, for example, somebody that only had uh, one arm wanted to play pool on their PC, they couldn't play this version because of how it works. You have to hold down the S key, for example, to actually move your Q and take the stroke. Um, which means if you've got one arm, you can either move your mouse around, as I'm doing here, or you can hold your S key down, which changes it from saying aim to saying shoot. But you can't do both. Once you've got your S key down, you can no longer... Oh, no, I've potted away. What a shame. Um, I don't suppose anybody would have known that hitting that ball into that pocket would have sent the white there. Okay, so we're now playing as player one. They've just scored a point. Now, in this version of straight pool, you do not need to worry about potting um, colours in any particular order or potting uh, the black ball last or anything of the sort. Any ball that you pot is worth one point. So I'm going to pot the black here, hopefully. Ah, I've scored one point more than I had, so I'm now on two points. And that's why it's a, a goal of 15, and that's why um, you can do them in any order. You might say, well, what happens if you had like a goal of 30? There's only 15 balls on the table. How does that work? Oh, what a miss. Oh, I fluked it into the other corner. I'll take it. Um, and what happens there is after you've potted 14 balls, so there's one left on the table, assuming you didn't pot two in the last shot to pot the 14th and the 15th ball at the same time, then what will happen is they will both appear, uh, sorry, the, the, the last ball will stay on the table and then the rest of the, the pack will be re-spotted inside the triangle. Wow, what a bad miss that was. Did not put any effort into that, did I? I was too busy explaining to you what was going on. I say it's pretty much me playing against myself, um, which is not particularly fun. Uh, to have two people playing, because it was DOS, you would have really had to have had a phone line. Well, if you were very lucky, you could have had two people playing against each other by connecting up a, a null modem cable between two machines that were in the same physical room together. Failing that, uh, you would have had to have had a network connection between the two machines, 
and in DOS, I believe, you would have had to have set up IPX ODI and various other uh, programs. You probably needed to load about five or six, maybe not five or six, maybe three or four programs into memory that were the network drivers and protocols and so on. Oh, what a miss. That's always those shots where you have to s s slot it down the cushion that I sometimes struggle with. Wow, what a miss there as well. This is it. This is when you're concentrating on speaking at the same time as playing. You don't necessarily get both of them completely um, off pack. There's another shot. Right, so here we go. Look, that last ball and the 15, no, the, the other 14 balls get respotted while I'm still playing this one. I don't have to play that one. I could just hopefully another one will go in. Certainly at least a couple of balls went in there. I'm at 12 points at the moment, as you can see down the bottom, 14 now. So you don't have to play the, the loose ball, play them in any order, and you just get a point for each one. Now if you foul on the first shot, which sometimes happens, I sometimes pop a point on the first shot, uh, or miss, miss a rail entirely, or I think there's about two or three ways you can foul, um, you end up losing one or two points and your score can become negative. These are the ones that slide it along the cushion, but just at a slight angle. If you do it too far, you'll go parallel with the cushion. Actually, I think I bounced off the cushion at that point. Now, by the way, I'm hitting Z between shots, and what that does is it just sort of, you know, rather than sitting here, boring everybody, waiting for the white ball to travel, especially on a shot where you've travelled up and down the table a few times, right here, I can just press Z, and I'm at, ready to start the next shot. It's just a shortcut key. There's also an undo, like if I accidentally hit something and went, oh, I didn't mean to do that, I can undo. I mean, obviously I won't, I don't do that when I'm playing. And you can only undo whilst you're sort of playing on two player mode with nobody really playing the second player. Uh, you know, it, it lets you undo that. It's almost like a practice session. Uh, so you can kind of move ball. I don't know if you can move the balls around yourself, but you can sort of play a little bit without really sort of playing seriously to get balls into some sort of positions that you want them, and then you could um, practice. And if you're practicing a shot and you can't do it for some reason, you can't quite work out why, you can then undo that shot and keep practicing again and again to try and get the right angle. Um, but when you're playing against a second person via uh, serial link or um, on the network, you can um, you you can't use the undo facility. There's also a thing where you can set lines onto the uh, tra trajectories of the balls. I mean, I can show you that. I can press T, and now I can see where I'm going to aim. And so you look around, and you can kind of see that I have to be at this angle in order to just to pop that ball. Um, I have to be at you know, that angle. It's going to send the orange ball in there. The white's going to bounce on the cushion, hit the nine ball, and end up near where it started. So, and if you put on a, a swerve or a spin or top or back spin or whatever, you can see things moving around. Even the path of the object ball moves because you're applying spin which makes the balls, certainly the cue ball, it spins that in, it sort of curves it a little bit. So like, if I end up with the extreme right hand spin, that might not pop very well. It would pop there. Move back to the left hand spin. And all I've done is change the spin, but can you see that the cue ball path is changed? Well, that's based on the, the fact that you are right spin. You can also increase your butt, uh, you know, the cue position, which gives you almost swerve shots. You kind of have to aim... Oh, I did press the wrong button. Oh, hang on. Press the wrong button. T. Uh, that lets you undo the previous shot to replay it. So like, if I put the butt of the cue up and move, I'm actually applying a swerve to the ball. See how the cue ball is going to arc 
before it hits the up oh, the the orange one, number five. Anyway, um, what I want to do is just replay that shot. Turn off the lines. Let's reset it back to normal. I don't want to do that. I was just showing you there are various things you can set. Of course, because you could play online or even via a dial-up modem to somebody's house or whatever, um, it um, it has a chat facility so that you can speak to the to your opponent. So basically, it's kind of very similar to the different options that are available for online games today, but a lot harder to access. It's very very difficult to uh, to have multiplayer games back in the day when internet wasn't a massive thing. You know, it's really quite hard to uh, think about those times again, but the, the 90s, I mean, the internet was still in its infancy. Not many people were really online. If you were online, you were on a dial-up um, connection at that point. I don't think that ADSL or DSL or um, cable modems were a thing at that point. So everyone was just dial. Oh, so everyone was just on dial up and nothing else. Thing, uh, even the modem, even to establish a connection, you would have to listen to your modem wobbling at high speed and strange noises coming from it, lots of beeps and gurgles, for it to negotiate with the connection at the other end to determine line speed and so on. Fascinating stuff. I mean, the kids of today. If they had to listen to a modem gurgling away and then be online and not be able to use their phone whilst they were online because the phone line was in use by the internet, they just would not understand how how things were back then. But that was the kind of struggle we had to deal with in the uh, 90s. Um, and web pages, nothing at all like they are now. The, it was really seen as some sort of online encyclopedia pages of data pages of information that would save you having to go to a library and look in a book to try and find something um, you know, it, it, they did not envisage there were going to be absolutely tons of videos online um, that you would be able to see but bear in mind uh, modems were really slow actually as well so not only would it take you couple of minutes to dial in to your internet service provider it would also take you um, minutes at a time to display every single web page you could actually kind of read the page being uh, displayed as it was being downloaded and um, images you even had an option on your browser to turn off image loading if you wanted to just find some information you didn't really care so much about the images at the time you wanted to only read something, then saving it, downloading the images would actually save you A, some bandwidth, B, some time, and C, you wouldn't have to be online such a long time and then incur additional costs from your um, internet service provider. So uh, everybody's so lucky these days that things are available on tap as and when they need it at ridiculous speed and uh, video can be streamed in real time in a matter of seconds. None of this was heard of back then. You were lucky if you could even um, download the contents of a floppy disk within an hour. You know, it was that sort of speed, it was slow. Um, and we are just very lucky now. I mean, who would have ever thought that when CDs first became popular on PCs, they were definitely considered a um, not only a means of adding more data to a, uh, a program that was to be installed on your computer uh, and have it accessible by having the disk in the drive, because bear in mind, a disk, a CD may be held 600 megabytes of data and your hard disk might only be a gigabyte in size. So you couldn't consider installing the contents of one CD because you'd have used up half your drive's storage capacity on just the data on a disk. And that's what they, that's why they considered that CDs were also a, a sort of co kind of copyright protection. Because if they made a program bigger, if they included more files on the disk, it would encourage less people to want to 
try and download a copy from somewhere. But also, because the internet speeds were so low, you would wait an absolute age to download a gigabyte or 600 megabytes or whatever of data. You know, it would just be, it would be cheaper for you to go to the uh, store and buy the disk yourself somewhere rather than actually try and download a copy. So in a way, they kind of made it a form of copy protection um, by having a large program available on a disk. You would, uh, you can, you just have no option but to go and buy it. There would be no other way. And so, um, yeah, it's really good that, that obviously as time's gone on, hard disks have got larger and larger and larger. There's nothing stopping you from having every single con uh, CD that you've ever owned stored as a digital file on your hard disk now. And now that you've got SSD drives that can access things in an instant. They're actually a lot, lot faster than they would have ever have been as an actual CD. Um, and nobody thinks anything about downloading several gigabytes of data uh, per game now. You know, so in a way, it, it's, I mean, obviously you still wait an hour or two or four or five or ten, depending on the size of the game. Um, so in that respect, things haven't really changed. But the method of delivery that you're not paying for the time you've been online in the time in the amount of calls that you're making, um, it's, it's a fixed price these days, depending on whether you download two things a day or twenty things a day. It doesn't change the cost unless you're on some very unfortunate system. Um, but yeah, it's just it's just really good how things have changed. But um, back then. The, the 90s when these games were around don't forget Doom was uh, around 1980, 1994 90, 94? I'd say 94 ish uh, and that was a very popular game when it first came out but they encouraged you to make a copy of the shareware version and send it to people and distribute it to them and let them play it and then if they liked it they'd buy the full thing so they were very clever people very clever um, because imagine how Doom would have become less popular if they hadn't have uh, released the first episode as shareware. Um, oh, what a shocking shot that was. That was terrible. Safe in the way, in a way, that uh, can't see that pocket easily. Well, maybe. But I wouldn't risk it. Right, let's go for this red. This is another one of these reds that's along the cushion. Oh, and I missed it completely. I overcompensated for the, the running towel out of the cushion that I went, uh, normally end up doing. Anyway, um, so this is this is a DOS game, not very interactive on your own really, unless you just want to practice playing pool. Um, quite limited. Uh, oh, I should show you the AI. Uh, oh, right, yeah, let's do that. I can sit here and waffle on, or I can show you the AI. So let's play against a computer player. Stop the current game. Yes. Uh, what shall we do? Straight pool. Or, no, let's go eight ball. Now this is kind of what you'd play in a a pool hall. You can choose which player that you pick. Uh, they're supposed to be kind of s simpler versions through to complicated, but it doesn't matter who you pick. They're still terribly shocking. Uh, let me show you what I mean. I'll take a I've broken up, and I'm going to pop the weight. Why don't you think, oh dear, that's it, game over, Dead Eye Dan is going to beat us. They were clearly just trying to get some sort of random aiming bot, and they didn't even manage to get that very successfully. Uh, born, uh, foul not, foul born not hit. Okay, so let's just pop this. When you see how bad it is to try and play against a computer player, oh! Did I just pop the wrong ball? I didn't even really contemplate that. I'm straight. I just went, I just got there and took a shot. I didn't even contemplate that I was hitting the wrong one. Oh, look at that. I've missed a ball into a pocket. So now it's Dead Eye Dan's turn. Well, at least he hit us. At least he hit a spot. But you can't exactly call them challenging players. Let's put it that way. I don't know, if you can tell me in the comments on the video if you hear any sort of ticking sounds or something. For some reason, 
I have got this really weird ticking sound that I think is coming from my speakers. And yet I have turned off my um, sound and it still stays on. I turn off my amplifier, I still hear the ticking sound. I have tried a bunch of things and for some reason I can't quite tell whether it's my PC, whether it's my ears, whether I'm imagining something. I really don't know what's going on. I just hear a tick, 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 tick sound. I've tried turning off the mic, I've muted it, and done all sorts of things, and I still keep hearing this ticking sound. Oh, what a shot that was bad, wasn't it? Um, how do I get up to there now? You'd think I would be able to bounce off of here. Well, it might just about give me the angle to hit it, so let's just try that. Uh, oh, unlucky, I hit the wrong ball. So that gives him a foul shot. Which doesn't seem to make much difference because he's still useless. Okay, I want to hit the very thin edge of this ball, so I want to sort of aim there. Yes, the last thing I needed was to pop the white ball at that point. I'm still trying to play this as if I'm um, actually playing against an opponent that kind of knows how to play, whereas clearly they don't. Uh, what do I need to do? I need to hit this ball at that sort of angle. Yes, there we go. It's really weird playing pool on a 2D screen when pool is inherently a 3D game. It's really quite tricky to gauge how you hit balls correctly um, because your eyes are quite clever. They're processing. I mean, obviously, uh, well, how does he? How does he even pop something like that? That's ridiculous. <laughs> how does he even pop? Uh, I'm going to have a foul shot there. Thank you. Yeah, because that was pretty poor. Um, your eyes know that a snooker table or a pool table is a 3D object. And you, you know that this screen that you're looking at when you're playing something like this is 2D. And therefore, your brain is... Although it's, it, it knows it's looking at a 2D flat screen, and it knows the picture that it's seeing is a 2D representation of a 3D scene. Yeah. But it then has to work out the difference between the 2D of the screen, the 3D oh I pointed the way, the 3D of the the snook the book the pool table or the snook table, and that it knows it's got to kind of work out the difference and kind of accommodate that in in the game. I don't know how your brain does stuff like that. That should be a foul as well because it didn't hit the way off. Oh, there's nobody stripes or spots yet. Oh, okay. I mean, I get to ch choose what I want to be. Uh, do I want to be spots or stripes? I suppose I could be spots. There we go. I now need to get the right angle to pop this one and go up the table a little bit. Not enough. I don't like that shot across the, uh, the top cushion or the bottom cushion. Let's not do that one. But then the alternative is a blue. That's a very tricky blue. Mm. How do I do that? It's kind of that angle. What a pot! What a pot! Okay, and adjust. Yeah, I think I should be able to get that number one ball in. Looking at that, I don't think that that hits that uh, stripey ball, so. I'm talking about there. Oh, not enough. Close though. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, your brain's very clever. It kind of works out the difference between 2D and 3D and kind of just encompasses the fact that you're trying to do one thing and it needs to see it in a different way. Just outstanding, really. Yeah, my problem here is if I pop this ball, well, no, let's have a go. Uh, something along those lines. 
Wow, that was so far out. That was unbelievable. Oh, I very nearly was able to pop, uh, hit the three into a potable position at the time, but I couldn't get it. How does this thing even play? It's obviously just picking kind of a random direction and just aiming randomly for now. They obviously hadn't worked out the code for um, the the players that you were to face at that time, and therefore they hadn't even. Oh, how does he do that? Pots hits the hits the only ball he's not allowed to hit, and leaves me snookered. Maybe they were uh, working on snookering ability at that point. Oh, that's tricky. I'm not going to be able to get that in. Uh, in theory, I could cut it in. Yeah, I could cut that into the middle. Notice I don't have to nominate a pocket. Oh, overcut. Oh, if I pop the um, white ball while I'm on the black, I think that's a foul. And I think it's um, game to the other player. Don't quote me on that. It's been. There are so many different rules when it comes to ball and different versions of it in different countries and so on, and different rules in different leagues. It's hard to know exactly uh, which version of the rules it, it's using. Anyway, there we go, I've potted it. That's 2-0 to me. I very much doubt I'm going to lose this match the way that this player plays. Why is it the white goes in every time? On the break, every time. It doesn't matter how hard I hit it, how soft I hit it, what angle I use. Nine times out of ten, the white ball goes in. Um, stripes would be obvious to uh, have there, wouldn't it, really? Uh, yeah, I think I'll stick with stripes. No. Oh, what the heck was that? Unbelievable. Oh, well, I'm going to continue stripes as well this <laughs> There's less of them on the table now. Okay, I just want to give this a little tap. Uh, that should be about right, yes. Oh, a little tap, I said. Well, I was going to go for the, the red in the middle of our, uh, for the next one, but I have to go for this ball instead. Oh, did I hit the, uh, the brown first? I might have done. Oh, I did. Wow. See, there's not much of a challenge. There's no point really playing these players. All it does is waste your time. That's why I play single player against myself. Yeah, I'm still on stripes. Uh, yeah, it should be okay to try and... Oh, I missed. It's okay though, no harm done. That would be considered quite a good shot. Oh, <laughs> what was that? <laughs> He didn't even try and do anything, he just, oh, I'll give up and pop the white. I oh, know, I could, I could. Go for this one first. Yes, let's do. Oh, what a hit. I, uh, I tried to aim for my balls, but I put too much spin on them, on the, on the cue ball, and therefore it didn't go. Yeah, that's okay, we should be all right. Orange into the, the corner. Oh, well, it would have been if I'd have aimed better. Oh, I'm still hearing a ticking sound. I don't know if it happens on, you know, if it's audible to my mic. My mic is inside a webcam, so it's not the best mic in the world. And it might um, be at some point, if I become a little bit more popular on YouTube, that I'll uh, get myself a better setup for a microphone and so on. I don't know yet early days and I shouldn't really be worrying about things like that and while I'm still a, a very small channel. But we will wait and see what the future holds. <laughs> How does he miss every single ball? <laughs> oh well, it gives me something to do. Laugh at his mistakes. As I say, it doesn't matter which um, of the players you pick, they're all as bad as each other. None of them can play. Uh, it's, as if, it's as if this whole part of the program, they just put it there as a placeholder. Let's just make a random shot every go, just so that we know 
shot taking works and then we'll work on the AI to give each player a, an ability but they hadn't obviously worked out what that ability was going to be at that point because it's clearly not this random position hit and hope uh, I can still move yet yeah, this is it for 3 nil. what a surprise 3 nil. match over it say okay. so yes this was virtual pool now there was one other game uh, within this there's nine ball let's just pick uh, two games that will do I'll show you this as well yeah we can still pick some random person that doesn't really work that's me first why is it always me first now in nine ball which American people will know better than probably the eight ball version you have to aim for the lowest possible ball now if you notice it's still my go there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight balls on the table. I have potted the purple one already. I call it purple, I think that's the colour. Um, as long as I hit, you see at the bottom corner of where it says my my side, and it's got the yellow. As long as I hit the yellow first, I don't have to actually pot the yellow, I can pot any ball. I could use that yellow to bounce around the table and knock this grey colour into the middle pocket, and that would be a fine shot. As long as a ball goes in, it's still your go. Obviously, you want to try and pot the stripey ball, the nine ball. You don't have to do it um, after you've potted all the others. You can take a break shot, hit it really well, and the nine ball goes into the pocket. No other ball goes in. You've won that 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 game. Uh, let's see. There we go. I just potted the grey ball with the blue one but because I hit the blue first that's fine I want to hit this about there oh that was a poor shot I should have been a little bit more of an angle shouldn't have been so straight oh this is, gives you opportunities to snooker your opponent as well I don't think they call it snookering your opponent in the um, US, they call it something else, but I cannot remember what the term is. Oops, I potted the white. That means the other player gets ball in hand. Oh, he can pot one now. Why couldn't he do that five minutes ago? They obviously had a very, very basic amount of AI already in the uh, program. Oh, where do I want to put that? If I hit this, I've got the problem of it maybe going in the corner, the, the white ball going in the corner pocket. I want to aim, well, in an ideal world, I want to aim about there. Yeah. Okay, no harm done. Oh, you can press O for like an overview of the table. There's various, oh, there's various options you can hit. Ah, see now, this is where I really want to try and pop this, this nine ball. If I can get the angle right to hit the red, which is a pretty thin angle. Oh, I didn't get there. I could use it to hit the um the nine ball in. He snookered me, didn't he? Not quite. Did I? Oh, did I snooker him? Oh, I potted the white. Oh, that's terrible. So it's, it's like they, they started to put some of the AI into the game. They just didn't get all of the AI into the game. This has given me another chance to um, try and pop the, the, the nine ball. Do I want to do it directly? I could try. It's quite, going to be quite hard to hit though because I... Hmm, how do I um, hit that very thin? Not sure I can. Try. Oh, that was a complete and utter muller. Never mind. The idea was there, but the practice was terrible. Oh, a snooker. Yes, he snookered me. Well, that was sneaky, wasn't it? So it's now hmm, trying to find the angle. Let's see. It's about here somewhere. Oh, miles. Terrible. Okay. 
at least I've got an opponent on this version. I wouldn't say that they're the greatest. Maybe they had only started the very rudimentary parts of the um, computer players. No, 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 no. Ooh, okay, okay. Well, that's not what I wanted to do, but I'll take it. No. How does this player play already? He's got this. No, he hasn't. Ooh. Wow. Oh, for goodness sake. You're not kidding me. Oh, the pressure's on now. That's 1-0 like to the computer. How did I miss? How did I not pot that? Or how did I end up potting white with it? Ridiculous. Oh, I thought I would have snoopered in there, but I didn't. Always missed it. Ooh, so close. Wow, okay, right. Overcut it. Right, this is tricky though. That's so hard to try and get in. I got it. <sighs> At least the Z key still works here. To speed things up a bit. I mean, it's not cheating, it's just like, I've had my go, I want to not sit, stand here waiting for the board to go around the table. Oh! That was a lousy shot, and I would not have been on the uh, six, the five ball anyway. Is that going in? No. Uh, right, what am I trying to do? I want to. Yeah, it's not the worst shot ever. Don't think it goes in this car, this pocket. Well, it does. Oh, well, that was the worst shot ever. I'm not complaining. Yeah, definitely not after that. Is it going to snooker me? Oh, nearly. But not quite. I snookered him. Should be able to pop that actually from there. Yep. Oh, and then what's he going to do with the brown though? Did he have the ability to double balls? No, he missed it. Wow, what the hell was that? Wow, how on earth did I miss that easy ball? Oh dear me. That was terrible. Oh, it's catching though. Just takes one of us to miss and then both of us miss. I wonder how easy it would be. No, not very easy. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter who pots all of these balls, it matters who pots the stripey one. That's the hard one. At any moment, I could bounce around the table and pot it without really paying much attention. Oh, that is crazy. How did I miss it? Oh, no, 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 this is bad. My only saving grace here is that that yellow is, that stripey nine ball is very hard to pot. Yeah, I should think so too. Serves you right for being at an awkward angle. I can see what he tried to do. He wanted to give it a thin snick, but he didn't get there. Well, I, I want a bit of angle on this. And I'm not going to hit it hard either. Oh, I don't want to um, follow it. I don't want to follow it in. Oh, 
my goodness me. <laughs> I was about to say I don't want to follow it in, and that's exactly what I did. Ah, I think it's my go still. What did I pop? Uh, the red. Oh, that's tricky. The only thing I could see to do there was just to tap it. Oh, I think that's quite good. What the heck kind of a shot was that? <laughs> it was right next to the ball. He just completely stuffed that up. Uh, lowest ball, not hit first. Okay, well, I can bring my keyboard to about here somewhere. Or more than that. Yeah, about there somewhere. One thing I do not want to do is follow the... I don't want the white ball in the middle pocket. So maybe I should put a bit of spin on this. Now when you hit a ball with left hand side, it's going to curve slightly to the left, so that should do it. Oh! Holy, what's it that was close? No, do not oh, I stupid myself, did not. Mm, okay, tiny bit of left spin. Oh, so close. Last thing I wanted to do was leave it on for him, but there you go. This is it, this is a decider, this one. We were both one frame more, one game more. Match game, match goal two. Oh. Hang on a minute. Here we can't, we can't see this one. I think he was trying to, well, apart from snooker me, he was trying to um, pop the stripey ball there. Oh, now what do I do? Oh, where do I aim here? Don't know where I can aim. Rail not hit. Oh, hang on. I hit the rail with the white ball. Surely that's classed as rail hit. I might lose this to the computer that's not very good, but he seems to be really reasonably good at this. At this particular game, he seems good. Right, now these are tricky. I end up overcutting them normally, and they just go straight along, bounce off the top cushion or the bottom cushion, and then don't go in the pocket. So, what I need to do is slightly less than what I would normally um, hit. About there. Yes, oh yes, yes, yes. And I'm plumb for the the nine in the corner, if I hit it nicely. Last thing I need is to uh, overcut it. Oh, phew, two one. Oh, well, that's a little bit more challenging then. So some of the AI was in then, some of it was in. Made some strange choices along the way. Uh, but if you play on the eight ball or the straight pull, settings you can forget it as for rotation i have got zero clue what that one is i must look it up at some point i think there's a help menu if you go help game rules okay rotation the object is to reach 61 points the cue ball must hit the lowest numbered ball before hitting any other ball legally pocketed balls count their numbered value. A foul results in ball in hand anywhere. All illegally pocketed balls are spotted. Oh, okay. Oh, so, right, okay, rotation. Oh, I actually want to try and play that then. And that's all. Game setup. Rotation. Uh, one game per match. Does it let me have that? It does. So it's the first person to... Uh, 61. Let's see if any of these players are in red. We won't know. So you've always got to hit your lowest numbered one. But any ball that you pot, I think I've just potted the three ball. And I must have potted something else that totaled up to seven. Uh, to total up to ten points. Okay. So I don't suppose black matters then, other than counting as an eight points. We'll soon find out. Oh, oh, you got to hit the lowest one, of course. Sorry, I completely messed that up, didn't I? <laughs>
What the heck was that? Ridiculous. I oh, see. So yeah. Oh. Oh. Nice. Okay, let's not mess the walls up again. You you can pop the lowest one. No, you can you have to hit the lowest one, but anything you pop is fine. Okay, right. So in theory I could use the the five ball to hit the thirteen in the pocket. If I pull this off I'm a genius. Yeah, well, it's it didn't go. Might have snookered my opponent though. Looks like it. Oh, and it looks like the well, how did he hit that? You have got to be kidding me. Yeah, as you can see, the AI wasn't dead right at that point, was it really? Oh, left him an easy sitter there. So that was how many points? I can't remember what, what colour was that. Orange, oh yeah, seven. Oh, he's a bit of a, a shark as well. So here's the eight ball. Yeah, okay. Where's nine? Oh, it's sitting right there. Don't get too carried away now. Oh, now you can't pop that one. Oh, he tried. He tried to get it. He very much tried. Uh, left that. Oh, left that awkward for me. I was about to say, and I messed it up. Messed that up big time, didn't I? 52. That's him got more than 61. Game up. He wins. Right. Okay. Just got to get more than 61. Oh, I've potted 26 in two shots. Oh, however many balls went in. I didn't see how many went in. Oh, wow, that was terrible. How did I even miss that? Well, I don't know what the heck he was trying to do there. He didn't see that there was a ball in the way. Okay, I'll read the one. Okay, so after this ball, it's the purple. So I just need to... Line up to there. Now I can just do a nice gentle, gentle shot at the purple. Yes. Now I've got this one, and I need to be down for the that mushy, mushy brownie, uh, mushy grey colour. Did I get too far? Ah, too far. Wow. Okay. Well, maybe I can still hit it. Oh, I thought I was going to snook at him then. But instead, it's possible. Yes, of course it is. Well, I'm on. The, I'm in the lead on this one so far. Just shows you if you break off and you can pop a few with higher value, it gives you a head start. Black next, followed by the stripe you've got. Um, yellow over there. Black. Oh, did thought I'd overcut that then. Yes, nice. Now it's blue. Don't go too far. Oh, that was close. Just need a gentle position. Yeah, that's not bad. That shouldn't be too bad. Oh, game over. My side win. What was that? No. Well, I didn't see how I could aim for that ball. Uh, in about a couple of minutes. Wow, what was that? I should have just moved it. I didn't even move it. That was stupid.
Dum do dee dum e do wa. Whoa, 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 yeah, yeah. Only the lonely. As you can see, I am not paying as much attention to this as I probably should because I'm messing everything up. Especially when he's so hot for some shots. Oh, what's he got to go for? This brown. Oh, of course he pops it. And gets plum on the plum on the black. Yep. He's gonna come a cropper at some point though. Hey, no more of that Tom Frulovy. But only takes him one or two more shots and he's um Oh he's just missed that up. Probably still managed to pot it in the middle though, you wait and see. Oh, very nearly. Has he left it for me though? Uh, it's not the easiest to uh, tap it. Try and tap it in that cushion, that pocket, or this pocket. You can tap it into that pocket. Yes. And I just need to give that a gentle tap. Oh. And this is not the most straightforward of shots, but give it a good enough oh, angle and enough sp a gentle speed, and it goes in. This is it, frame ball. Or is it? Yeah, it must be. Yes. What a uh, match. Ah, because I said one game, it doesn't have a limit now. It's not like the total. You don't need like three to, to win the match or whatever. Right, okay. Um, so that's it, 2 1 to me. That's not a bad little game. So that is. Um, that is. I thought it would have a, a an about me kind of thing, but it doesn't seem to, does it? Um, let's have a look at the demo. There we are, I'll leave it playing with itself for a couple of games. Or will I? Oh, look, the demo is pretty hot. Okay. The demo is pretty hot. Well, am I glad I wasn't playing any of those players? Oh, yeah, especially cutting things in like that. Well, there you go, that's the demo. I think we've seen enough. When you quit the program, you get, uh, oh, I thought you were going, we were going to get a little bit of information. But there's the, um, oh, file ID dot, dot dis. Do you remember those files? If, you, if you're if you used to um, DOS and back in the days when Windows wasn't so big, uh, there were programs like List, and you would go into your file ID dot dis. Virtual pool com complete pre-released works just as good as the nine disc version, apart from the AI and all the fancy graphics and so on. Oh, well, there you go. Not a lot to tell there. There seems to be some MIDI files, Maple Leaf. Um, I don't know if all of these are MIDI files. I don't really know. They would say MID, wouldn't they? Oh, do they not have MID? Maybe they don't. Pineapple is definitely a MIDI file. They seem to have like a little note symbol at the front. They do. That seems to be that little note symbol. So does all of this seem to be... Yes. Yes. Yeah, they all seem to have like a note symbol. All of the .m files. So they're MIDI, I believe. Which is interesting because even that seems to be a MIDI file. Um... I mean, assuming that they are MIDI, what I could do is copy one and rename it and try and play it in something else, but I don't have any MIDI players um, for DOS. I don't think so, anyway. Um, but I could rename them and try them at some point in a different program on the win on Windows and see, see what comes of it. But anyway, if I say bye-bye... Is it bye-bye? Bye-bye! I'll catch you on the next stream, okay? Speak to you soon. Bye!